You know, it's not temporary installations. I'm not interested in, in art for art's sake. And it's also not trying to pretend like I build this thing and it's going to become part of the historic register. So what's all that in-between stuff? What are, what are the marks that architects make? What are the gestures that we make as architects? In, in my case, in an artful way, because that's also a language that I speak. People that look like me have this situation and it's multi-layered, it's complex, it's political, it's racist, it's classist, it's a lot of things. But when you remove even all of that emotion, you just talk about architecture and the structure and the building and what is the history of this as a piece of property, as a parcel, as a landscape, the story is still multi-layered and complex in this way that helps me say, this is a great candidate to call attention to all of that's going on. Inglewood is always a popular sort of ground zero because it has become the poster child for all things bad, evil, dangerous, scary of a major city. So it becomes this kind of epitome of an area that people can assign blame to, make assumptions about. It for me has become the canvas because it's a prime story that people think they know that I have an opportunity to now shift the narrative for. Because I think that changing the story or changing the way the narrative is registered is just as important as the narrative. Especially in this social media age, what people think the story is becomes almost more important than what the story really is, right? But in terms of the reality of this, again, as a landscape, as architecture, I think it's important to be strategic about showing that one community area, one neighborhood in one big city is having all of this happen. And that this is a microcosm, that it's this big and it's this big at the same time. And so this project, if it becomes a kind of bellwether or a little bit of a beacon for other people to say, what's the way I can best make that impact on the landscape? Maybe it's, I'm not gonna go paint houses, that's, that's her deal. I'm not going to do it block by block, that's the Astor's deal. I'm not going to go build a skyscraper, that's Jeannie Gang's deal, right? So if you figure out what your deal is, what's the way that you can transform what these landscapes are? And so I feel like my thinking about this house, or in this house in particular, is as a culminating event in tandem with the biennial, can it be, even just for that moment, the thing that makes people in this neighborhood know there's a biennial, because they don't, right? And people who might might or might not come past a certain point. Come on, right? And then we all come together, and it does, this is weird kumbaya moment, right? But it's like, we all come together, we paint the house, but then I, I like the reality that then it's gone. So I need this thing to be gone, and then I need us all to come back and sit here and go, wow. And, and is just the gravity of that moment enough to spark conversations that lead to ideas that lead to solutions. So I'm not aiming for the solutions, I'm just trying to set the table or the canvas, right, for, for what will, what the future could be, right? It's, it's really, I think, properly contextualizing the role that an architect or an, an individual can play in choreographing the landscape.